The revelation that Clover is a member of the D-Clan is quite astonishing and sheds light on why his death was never shown directly. Oda cleverly hid Clover's smile, which ties into a fascinating mystery about Clover's name that we'll explore in a bit. Even though we never saw Clover's actual death, we did witness his final moments as the scholars shouted about the imminent fall of the Tree of Knowledge, which was likely about to crush them all. These last moments of Clover are incredibly tragic and notably devoid of the characteristic D-Smile. This detail is especially poignant when juxtaposed with the panel of Jacques de Saul, who, frozen and believing he was facing death, still managed to give a D-Smile. This discrepancy has led to a couple of theories. The first suggests that Clover wasn't initially intended to be a member of the D-Clan, which is always a possible direction Odor could take. The second theory is more complex, proposing that Clover didn't die with the traditional D-Smile because he was not open about his heritage. Clover denied his D-Lineage and even publicly severed his connection to his brother, possibly preventing him from receiving the privilege of a D-Smile upon death. Those who carry the will of D often smile in the face of death because they face their end without regrets, having either accomplished their goals or lived true to their desires. In contrast, Clover neither fully achieved his objectives nor embraced his heritage, leading to a somber demise. Now, let's delve into Clover's name because it involves some intriguing translation debates. In Japanese, his name is Kirao D. Kuroba, which has been translated by some fans as an Irish word pronounced similarly to Cleave or Clive, though there's some dialectal disagreement. This connection to Irish culture is fascinating but tenuous. A simpler and potentially more accurate translation could be Cloud, akin to how Gold D. Roger often read as Gold Roger. Thus, Kirill D. Clover could be translated to Cloud Clover, which fits nicely with themes of freedom and dawn present in one piece. However, the Irish name also holds significant weight, referencing a mythical sort of light, which ties into the larger narrative of One Piece, where characters seek the One Piece and uncover the world's lost history. Exploring further, the sort of light in Irish folklore appears in tales of heroes on quests, aligning with the themes in One Piece, although these stories sometimes take bizarre turns, such as transforming into werewolves due to infidelity. Another mythical Irish weapon, the Speargate Bulk, comes to mind. Known from the Fate franchise, this spear, associated with the sun god Nika, could hypothetically be the Sword of Light. Given that we've delved into Irish mythology, it wouldn't be surprising for Nika to wield such a weapon. This speculation ties into Oda's tendency to incorporate global myths into one piece, with Joy Boy's crew potentially inspired by various cultural legends, such as the Jewish Golem, Hindu cosmology with Sunisha, and Egyptian mythology with Nefertari Lily. The revelation about Clover sparks further speculation about other hidden members of the D-Clan. There could be numerous undisclosed dis, including people we've already met, like Trafalgar D. Waterlaw, who were instructed to keep their heritage a secret. Most known dis either boldly proclaim their lineage or are too reckless to hide it, unlike those who, like Clover, concealed their identity due to the D Purge. This context might explain why Garp joined the Marines to protect his family from the D Purge, aiming to demonstrate that those with the will of D could be heroes, not threats. This mission might have driven Garp's obsession with making Luffy and Ace Marines to cleanse the D-stigma and integrate them into society. This background adds complexity to Garp's relationship with Dragon, who, by becoming the world's most notorious criminal, might have undone Garp's efforts. Meanwhile, Vegapunk's storyline introduces characters like Atlas, the aspect of violence, and the possible tribute to Ginny, Kuma's childhood companion. Vegapunk's knowledge of Ginny and his decision to clone himself with a tribute to her raises intriguing questions, potentially linking to Kuma's motivations and memories. Regarding the status of the Vegapunks, including the ambiguously fated Edison, the situation remains uncertain. Lilith, the first Vegapunk introduced and named after a figure banished from paradise, might become the canonical Vegapunk. This mirrors her narrative arc of being cut off from punk records, paralleling the myth of Lilith's banishment from Eden. Lastly, the future of characters like Yamato, who might become the daimyo of Curry, remains in flux as the series approaches its climax. As the narrative races towards its final war, the roles and fates of these characters will unfold. Bonnie's potential to use her powers more effectively and Luffy's possible time-traveling twist add layers to the speculation especially regarding the intricate connections between past, present, and future events in the One Piece world. Now let's revisit the fate of Vegapunk's satellites. Shocker was shot, Pythagoras exploded, Stella was stabbed, Atlas was also blown up, Lilith was rendered unconscious, and York returned to Marie Joa to become a detestable person. However, Edison's status remains frustratingly vague. The last sight of him was collapsing against a wall, 
with York later implying his disconnection from punk records as his death. However, until Oder confirms Edison's death explicitly, we should assume he's alive. Edison might have a critical role in undermining the world government and ensuring the Straw Hats escape. It's also worth noting the mythological connections in One Piece, such as Lilith's resemblance to Adam's first wife, banished from paradise. This mirrors her disconnection from punk records, hinting at a deeper narrative significance. Additionally, the mystery of Zoro's request from Vegapunk remains, clarified in the official translation as a demand during a tense negotiation, not a specific task. As we approach Elbeth, Viking themes might become prominent, and the satellite's elimination order is not as symbolic as some theories suggest. The notion that Yamato might become the daimyo of Kuri aligns with his journey mirroring Kozuki Odin's. However, with the series timeline moving swiftly, there's limited time for these developments before the final war. Lastly, Bonnie's potential to rejuvenate the ancient robot with her powers, Luffy's possible time-traveling twist, and the final arc's approach all add layers to the narrative. Time travel, once deemed improbable, gains plausibility given the series' themes and past revelations. If Luffy indeed travels back to set the Void Century's events in motion, it might explain the knowledge of future events and Emu's recognition of Luffy. However, this theory remains speculative, and the story's conclusion will ultimately reveal the truth.